they were just to start off with the, the club this weekend. Massive match against Ballygunner. Massive match. Uh, yeah, looking forward to it now. It's been a nice whole campaign for us like so far to, in Limerick and it was nice to get the win with the club. They're an experienced club. So like what have they won? Five or six in a row in, in, in uh, Waterford. So like serious club team. A serious club team. Uh, massive challenge and especially travelling to Waterford as well. Like, like lads have been involved with setups at county, they'll know the routine uh, travelling and in buses and stopping for pre match meals or whatever. But it'll be new to a lot of lads like so another challenge and I'm seriously looking forward to it. Uh, how big of a thrill was it to get back over the line once more in Limerick? Yeah, it was brilliant. Like we were there in fifteen. We lost by a point, went back to following year, won it in sixteen. So like with this current team like we're kind of there, thereabouts every year. So, semi final, pushing for a final spot for the last five or six years. So, like, nice group of lads there, and we've got a good bunch of minors coming through as well. So, which is good for the club. Because, yeah. like, the last time you got through a couple of years ago, I think it was Glen Rovers who knocked you out that time. Did, yeah. yeah. I, you, I presume you want to kind of atone for that and kick on and actually make a market monster. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I don't know. But, um, it's hard enough to get there in the first place, like coming through your respective county or whatever, whatever side you're coming from. So, whether it be Glen Rovers, I know, and know they're playing the chip champions, like whoever it may be, like you want to go out and leave your mark on Munster and like make a bit of history for yourself individually as a group of players and most importantly for the club. So, like, uh, look, we want to put a stamp on Munster and we have a massive challenge on Sunday, so we're looking forward to it. Because with the team you have in the spine, like yourself in, at centre-back, then Keane Lynch hurled a year in 2018, and of course Aaron Galan up front, people will, will sort of expect from you. They kind of will, like as you said, you had the name stuff there, but as you know, and you're all you hear, you're watching sport a long time now, we can come for nothing in the day, like you need kind of things to go your way. And we had a bit of experience, we have a lot more than the, just the three of us, like there's a lot of experience there. When club hurling, there's a lot of lads there have played county, inter-county championship and national league, so a lot of lads there and a good few le younger lads coming through, so a lot of experience there, so hopefully we can make it count for us on Sunday. How big of an influence is Kieran Kerry? He's he's a guest man in the dressing room, like, and he's a guest man around the place, like, but always level-headed, like, always cool, like, but on a one-to-one -one basis, like, he's brilliant for the players. He knows everyone individually, he knows their strengths, their weaknesses. It's like working with players and trying to get the best out of them, like he knows that like as well. What should he play? Is Jeremy like obviously back the way if like you have a lot of storied kind of figures in Limerick. Is that is that important now when you go into this monster club like that you have a tradition, there's a kind of a I suppose there's a, a culture of winning in the club? There is, like when you when you walk into the clubhouse like just to the left there's there's now twenty pictures of club championships on the wall. We have four Munster clubs and there was two occasions or occasions there where they got to the R Ireland club. So as you said, there is a history there. And for myself involved with the Ireland County team and the lads that are and the club lads that are there, we all want to make our own piece of history in our own jersey with our own team. Like what's done in the past is done. Like I have two two county titles now and I want to add to that. And it's the same as the players alongside me. You just want to add and just leave your own mark on it. Like the pictures on the wall are from the past. Two pic two pictures out of the eighty out of the twenty, I'm only involved in two of them. The other eighteen, like they're in the past, their history as I said. It's like we want to be adding more filling more gaps on that wall now. So like as I said, make a piece of history and just putting your mark down, you know, in the club. So yeah. What the Pearshick have done the last few years once they've got out of Limerick and you've obviously gone toe to toe with them, beating them a good few times. Does that offer you a bit more belief that once we get over them, we can really go through the provincial championships and the All Ireland series? Or go belly gun around about like is it? Sorry, the Pearshick. Just the fact they came out of Limerick and they've actually oh, set the standard. Him. Uh, uh, yeah, it is like they really have been the club in. Or Ireland club hurling, like not just Limerick, not just Munster. Like, as soon as they won Limerick in the last couple of years, like people were heading back for a win there. Ireland, like that's how much of an influence and how much of a good team they had. Like, so 
he never underestimated him. Like, so, as you said, getting over him, does it give you the confidence to push on and probably do what they've done the last couple of years? Maybe so, yeah. And as I said earlier, like, we're not taking too much confidence of it because hurling's all in the day, sport's all in the day. You're looking for that lucky break, for that lucky, for that referee to give you a call that you might not get another day or give you that decision. So, yeah, we're looking to push on Sunday, like, definitely as a team, yeah. Is there a kind of understanding there that teams who kind of thrive in these November pitches and stuff and the weather, it's almost virtually a different sport, so to speak, that you need that. It's almost a dogfight. Like, and it's no coincidence that the same clubs almost come to the fore, lads like Ballygunner and does the gauntlet laid down. Yeah, like a lot of it just come down to work rate and attitude. As you said, there'll be no ball bouncing off the ground on Sunday or for the next two or three months and probably tell. April again till it dries up again and you get going again. But like, yeah, it comes down to work rest and just having belief that like you're going to win this ball or there's going to be rocks every so often because the ground is so sticky, the ball is sticking. So just having the belief that you're going to go in and get that ball and come out with it and just being dogged enough to go in there in the first place and just do it. There was a lot of talk uh, for a while that Kieran Carey was going to head to Galway. Did any of that talk reach Patrick as well? No, didn't hear anything about it, to be honest. What, uh, what, have you, what can, lessons can you take from that Limerick final? Because there was a period for, for in the second half, I think it was nearly 15 to 18 minutes you went to that score, and so there's surely a lot of lessons that you're going to take into that Spelly Gunner game. Yeah, yeah. It's grand enough now we can have a laugh about it, because like, we laughed about it last, a few days after the county final we were celebrating and stuff like but. Yeah, it was fairly shocking stuff now, to be honest. It was, but like we were kind of creating the chances, we were doing everything right. We were getting into the score and on our, the area where we'd be most comfortable. Like, And we were just more executing it. Like, and they were just going marginally wide, but when you're in the stand, it looks terrible because all you see is the umpires waving it wide, and it's like, oh, another one, another one. But yeah, there was about 15 minutes past there where it was, and it was, they were ticking on scores, and they got it back to a draw. We finally got one, just kind of broke the momentum, and then but we kind of kicked on from there. But to be fair, like the experience is there now because I remember in 2015 when we did play in the Pearce, we were in a similar position, we were up by six points, and we just couldn't break momentum. And they went on, they actually won by five. So, like, did in that couple of years has passed, like, we had we've built that experience, and like lads that had been there before in 2015. No, just keep a level head and keep doing what we're doing and plug away. And we did. We didn't panic. There were no balls lobbed into the full forward line, hoping to get an all lucky score. We kept doing our process and just kept plugging away. And we got our scores and thankfully we got the end result. And it was Keen Lynch's two late points that kind of put the, the nail in, in, in the Pierschick's coffin. What is he like to play with uh, on, on the field? Obviously, it's in outrageous scale, as we all know. And as a captain as well, what's, what's he been like? He has been super this year. Uh, probably in the county final, like I've seen him put on some great shows like in the green jersey or, or in the blue and yellow jersey for as well, like playing alongside him since I was under 12, 10, so I was up along. Like you just kind of stand back and watch his flicks or whatever he's doing, it's, it's brilliant. But I'd say in an overall performance, he's probably his best 60 minutes of hurling. And no matter what jersey he was playing, I, I seen the last day in the Gaelic Crowns, the county final. So the role kind of suits him as captain. He's brilliant. He's been brilliant for us now, to be honest. Uh, even the speaking and the huddle and stuff like that, he he knows what to hit, hit the nail in the head like. And if someone's not carrying their weight, he knows just how to deal with it. He wouldn't be one to effing and blind and get getting you going. But no, he knows how to get the, shit, the boat rolling like. Is it a bonus that you've had a few weeks now to actually park the county title, enjoy it, rather than just being out? You see Boris Lai, for instance, they're out now the next week, yeah. and they only have a Saturday turnaround. Uh, we had the same situation in 2015, or sorry, 16, when we won it. Like, we had uh, only a week turnaround, so same as them now. It's like, And we were only, a lot of us were only winning our first county titles, and we were breaching a gap of 13 years, so you could imagine the celebrations, like, and just the relief more than anything. But then just to knuckle down to a new experience, a new challenge in the Munster Championship. So, uh, yeah, the break has sent us. We've been fairly going at it in training now. So hopefully the training we've done and the matches we played in training, that will withstand us, hopefully.
the year that you've had with Limerick, when you reflect on it, like brilliant in the league, just, uh, very, very good, obviously comprehensive in the Munster final, then very disappointed in the All-Ireland semi-final. How do you reflect on it? Uh, look, like when you start out at the start of the year, like you're going to be taking one game at a time. But like when you look at the overall picture, I know you have your like Munster Leagues or your Christian Ring Cups and stuff like that at the start of the year to get the boat rolling. Like, but uh, like there's three titles up for grabs, and like we came away with the National League title, we came away with the Munster League title, and on the day in the Ireland semi final, call it spade a spade. And I know a lot of players have said it. Like we probably lost to the better team on the day. In the game we only lost by a point, so look, these didn't go away, but like overall, it wasn't a bad year. What do you think went wrong against um, Kilkenny? Because they seem to be all over you, especially in the first 20 25 minutes. Yeah, it's just any day you go, like you're, you're playing Kilkenny, the history is there, like they're going to be dogged, they're going to be on top of you, so they've proven that in the past and they proved it again against us, like so. And we knew that, like, but they got an early goal as well, so it probably didn't help our case. Uh, no, any day you go, you've got to be prepared for the best, the best and you've got to be prepared for the worst. So, um, we just got a good start on us, and maybe we just probably weren't prepared for it as we should have been. Did they do anything that you hadn't seen from other teams since you know, you'd know you become champions because you were absolutely flying? Uh, we were indeed. Uh, no, there's nothing different. They probably just worked hard, just refused to give up on any ball. like so. And uh, we worked from on the day. Just going back to the club, was Aaron Galan pretty much playing with a broken jaw for the latter stages of the championship? Yeah, someone said it there earlier, yeah. Uh, he picked it up there, I'd say. <laughs> in the Kilmallock game, so yeah, he played the semi final and final with the jaw, yeah. So I kind of, really, kind of settled after the. We had a nice break, like we topped the group with the club. And we had about four week break so I had a nice period there to rest it like but you hear these things you see these things someone throws up an article and everyone just he's he's obviously a well established player and people know his name like so it's kind of exciting news that Aaron Glenn plays a broken jaw but it wasn't all it was led on to be either so he, he was fine he's tough out to fair there's <laughs> no big mix and from you anyway going in on him and training and stuff no, you were laying off mind, like He's the target man inside, so I try to mind him for some some bit in training. So uh, no, no, I leave him on. But given all, I wouldn't. If he needs waking up, alright, he, he wouldn't be long getting an all belt or two. Yeah. Do you do you feel like they're with the county next year that you're going to evolve how you play because people have had a, a lot of like there's a lot of footage out there of how you play at this stage and it seemed like it was going to be hard for anyone to actually stop it. It's one thing identifying it, another thing stopping it. Do you think you'll have to evolve a little bit after what happened against Kilkenny? Uh, look, there's, there's no science to it, like, you know, there's, there's hard work and just being relentless in, in your effort, I think. You know, like, no one's doing applied math inside in our dressing room, like, or no one's doing mathematical equations trying to figure out how to puck out a ball, like, just, just hard work to it, like, you know, just... Uh, there's more to it than that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you come on, you're selling us a pup there now. But, um... Like, are, like, even is there anything that you think you should do differently at all next year, or do you think you just go back and keep working on Plan A? I don't know. I actually don't know. We'll see in 2020. <laughs> Not getting much of you there. <laughs>